Hello, hello everybody, it's your boy Prof Chop, we're back again with some more creepy stories by Mr. Balen. Let's go, let's go, let, uh, let us proceed. I'm excited. I haven't seen a Mr. Balen video in a little bit. My in the 1960s was... and 1970s, hitchhiking became very popular amongst young people in America. Why? Hitchhiking is a form America. of transportation where you basically get rides from strangers. And so the way it works... <laughs> is... Not that type of rides. Baka. Okay, wrong type of video. I'm sorry. Is a hitchhiker will stand on the side of a busy road and they'll extend their arm. I've never done this. Their thumb up. Quick thing: Has anyone done this? Any bad stories to share? Put them in the comments, please. I'm curious. Signals to passing motorists that they want to hitchhike. That's the kind of universal sign for hitchhiking. And then a willing motorist, when they see a hitchhiker, they'll pull up alongside and offer a ride. Now, today, it seems unfathomably dangerous to just hop into a stranger's car or conversely, for a motorist to pick up a random stranger on the side of the road. But back then, this was considered totally normal and socially acceptable. And so with that in mind, on September 29th, 1978, a 15 year old girl named Mary Vincent was standing on the side of a highway just outside of Modesto, California, which California. is not far from San Francisco, California. Mary was a rebellious teenager who had recently run away from her home in oh. Las Vegas, Nevada. Her parents were going through a very nasty divorce and she just couldn't stand to be in the house anymore. And so that's why she had run away. And so she had hitchhiked all the way up to Los Angeles, California, where her grandfather lived. But after only being there for a couple of days, she became unbelievably homesick and wanted to go back and be around her parents and her family. Not surprised that much. And so one day when her grandfather was out, she slipped out of his house and she began hitchhiking back. She to ninja? Vegas. What the hell? And so she had hitchhiked from Los Angeles to Modesto, California. That's where the first person was willing How much to drive is that? her to. And so she was on that strip of highway in Modesto looking for another ride that could take her farther south. She was on this highway with two other young hitchhikers. Oh. They all had these signs that said going south. So they weren't just holding their thumbs out. They were holding these signs. And so the three of them are huddled in a group. They're holding their signs up. And at some point, mid-afternoon, this light blue passenger van that only had one passenger, it was the driver, he was a 50-something-year-old man, he looked pretty harmless, he pulled over when he saw the no, signs. No, no, that's a white van, homie. Nah, brother. People tell me legends about the white van. You do not go inside of the white van. Nah, if that was a black van, that's okay. If that was a black van, that's okay. White van? Nah, parked bro. Parked on the side of the road, Hell nah. 15 feet ahead of where they were. And so Mary's companions stayed where they were, and Mary ran up to this light blue van, and she looked through the passenger side window, which had been rolled down, and she See. asked this guy, hey, can you give all three of us a ride? We're going south. And this man, he would look at her and say, I can only give you a ride. I can't give the other two a ride. I can In an empty truck? And so Mary is confused because she's looking at this guy. Hey, come on, Mary. And she's seeing all this space in his van. And she's thinking to herself, you know, why am oh, that's I a red only van. allowed to go when they're going the same place I'm going and there's plenty of room in this van? Yes, Mary. But when she why, Mary? Think, Mary. Come on, Mary. He gently prodded this man and said, well, you know, are you sure you don't, you don't mind taking them too? He just said, look. I will take you, I will not take them. And so Mary said, okay, well, hold on, let me go back and get my bag. And so he stays parked, she leaves the van and she runs back to the other two people she was with and you know she explains the situation and they tell her, you know, Mary, this is not good. There's yeah, clearly Mary. something off with this guy. Shit's but Mary, off. even though she too shared this kind of reservation about this guy, she was so desperate to get home. She was so homesick that she couldn't face it. Hey, listen, listen to your instincts. People tell stories about how that instinct saved them. Listen to your goddamn instincts. The idea of having to wait around for another ride, which might not come until the next day or the day after, because not every motorist is willing to pick up hitchhikers, and she just did not want to wait any longer. And so she told her companions that, guys, I'm gonna take the ride. Maybe she'll so be okay. She says goodbye to her two friends, she grabs her bag, and she runs back she'll up to the okay. van, and she hops in the passenger seat. As soon as she sat down and closed the door, this man pulled Killed back her. out onto the road and started oh, driving. Okay. And then he turned and looked at Mary and introduced himself. His name was Lawrence Singleton. Really? Oh, really, Mary? This is the person you went inside of the car with? That Mary, what the fuck is wrong with you? Mary, come on. What? Listen, I know my hair is kind of weird, but don't don't ever go in a car with somebody that's boring and at the same time has hair sticking everywhere. Don't do that. 50 years old 
and then Mary, you know, she introduced herself, and then they have some small talk, and very quickly, Mary feels at ease around Lawrence. He kind of reminded her of her grandfather. He was very nice, very polite. And so she when she started as well. to feel tired pretty early on in their trip, she said, hey, Lawrence, do you mind if I doze off while you drive? And Lawrence would say, no problem. Go ahead, go to sleep. And so Mary turned away from Lawrence and kind of curled up on the seat, and pretty quickly she was asleep. A little while later, when she woke up, she looked out the window and immediately could tell they were going the wrong way. So she turns to Lawrence and says, you know, we're going the wrong way. And Lawrence would say, oh, you know what? I, I made a mistake. I I'll get us turned around. You know, sorry about that. I, I, I had no idea. But Mary's thinking to herself, we're really far in the wrong direction. Gosh, There's no. no way he accidentally did this, but she kind of bit her tongue because Lawrence would actually turn around and start going in the right direction. And so they're traveling in the proper direction for a little while and Mary's totally on edge, but she's careful not to give that off to Lawrence because she doesn't really know this guy. And even though he did make her feel comfortable, she just- Yeah, she doesn't know the guy, but at the same time, she felt comfortable enough to fall fucking asleep in this car. What? doesn't really know what his intentions are. And so she's just kind of looking around pretty apprehensively. And then they pull into this stretch of highway that kind of ran through this fairly forest. Yeah, that's a serial killer forest. Cars were on this stretch of road. And Lawrence suddenly tells Mary that he wants to pull over because he has to go to the bathroom. He wants to relieve himself. And so Mary kind of apprehensively says, yeah, okay, that's fine. And so as Lawrence is beginning to pull off of the highway, Mary happens to look down at her feet and she notices one of her shoes is untied. And instinctually, Mary just thought to herself, I better make sure that shoe gets tied because I might need to run away from this guy. But she didn't want to reach down and start tying her shoe. It was kind of awkward because the space was small and she was worried it would be kind of suspicious if she did it. And so she thought, okay, as soon as we pull off, I'll get out of the car. Why would it be suspicious? And I'll tie my shoe. And so Lawrence, he pulls over, but he doesn't just pull over onto the shoulder of this road. Instead, he pulls into this access road that kind of trails into the forest. Come on, Mary, you so have a knife. As soon as he turns on this Mary. road, the alarm Please? bells are going off in Mary's head. She knows something is wrong, you have a but knife, she doesn't really know right? what to say to Lawrence because he's not talking Crowbar? to her, and she doesn't really want to look at him. And so she's just kind of going over in her head what she's going to do. Is she going to run? What's the plan? Is she going to confront him? She doesn't know. And then eventually, after about a minute or so, when they are far enough away from the main road that no one on that road could see them, they're pretty far into this forest, Lawrence stops the car and he hops out to go relieve himself. And immediately, Mary, she hops out of the car too and she bends down to tie her shoe. Before she could finish tying her shoe, suddenly something smacked her hard in the back of the head. You are feeling uh, very bad, you gain very bad feelings about this man. He pulls up in the side of a fucking forest. No sight of any human contact in thousands, okay, maybe anywhere close. You go to tie your shoe and you pay zero attention to your Sarah. What the? Mary, what the fuck? God damn it, Mary. And it knocked her unconscious. It was Lawrence. He had hid a hammer next to his seat. And when he had gotten out, he did not go relieve himself. Instead, he walked around the vehicle and yeah. smashed her in the head. He relieved her of a couple of brain cells. Not that there were that many inside when of Mary it. Mary came obviously. too. She realized she was laying down oh, in the shit. back of the van. Hey, listen. And as she was looking out. The we know this story came to us. So Mary survived. The windows. I she think. See that Maybe. They were Hopefully. Still parked out in the middle Mama of the forest. Mary? And then when she tried to move, she realized her hands, her feet, everything had been tied down to the van. She couldn't move. Why? And so as she's wondering what's going on, Lawrence comes around. He opens the back doors to this van. He hops inside and he begins assaulting her. Mary has no idea what to do. She's a 15-year-old kid. She's 15. And this guy is on top of her. He's not stopping. And so she just began quietly begging him to please stop. Set okay, me that's free. awful. That's fucking anyone. awful. She just kept repeating on, that over and over and over again. And Lawrence never spoke spoke back he just continued the assault for hours and hours okay Finally, what kind of assault i don't want to know he got off yeah, of I don't mary want to and he climbed out of the back of the truck and he went around and he climbed into one of the front seats and he fell asleep and so mary probably tried what what, what? how the fuck i can i can barely fall asleep inside of my bed she fell asleep with a crazy ass person he fell asleep after he fucking assaulted a 15 year old what to free herself from her restraints 
but there was nothing she could do. The restraints were tied too tightly. And so for hours, she must have just laid there wondering what was gonna happen to her. And then at some point in the middle of the night, Lawrence wakes up again. And without saying a word to Mary, he just climbs out of the van and gets into the driver's seat and then drives the van out of the forest. He drives on the main road for a little while until he turns down another access road that takes them away from the main road. So away from any prying eyes. And he comes to a stop somewhere out in this forest in the middle of this big canyon. Lawrence parks the van. He climbs out and walks around to the back. He opens up the back doors where Mary is laying there whimpering and crying and begging to be set free. He climbs inside this and is awful. the torture continues for hours and hours until the sun finally Gosh. came up. At which point Lawrence stopped. He Just go to a BDSM club or something bro. People actually want that. They will pay people to do that to them. Why are you doing that? He climbed out of the back of the van Gosh. and he's standing out there and he turns around so he's facing Mary and he reaches in and he undoes her restraints. So he frees her. He pulls her out of the van and stands her up on the ground. And so she's crying, she's beaten, she's bloodied, she doesn't know what's going on. And she just gently says to him, please set me free. And he says, oh, you want to be set free? I'll set you free. And so oh, he walks God. around this totally destroyed 15 year old girl and he reaches into the back of his van where there's this toolbox and he pulls out a hatchet. And so he walks back and he's standing in front of Mary and Mary would have had a fraction of a second to see what was in his hand before in one fluid motion, he reaches and grabs her left arm with his left hand. No. He grabs her on the wrist, then he raises his hatchet up and he brings it down on her left forearm, severing her arm off right below the elbow. And so Mary falls backwards <gasps> to the ground and she looks down. And what the fuck? where her left arm just was she's in shock and before she can do anything Lawrence just walks over and with his left hand again he reaches over and grabs her right wrist and now Mary knows what he's about to do he's still holding this hatchet and so she's screaming and she's kicking him as hard as she can to try to get him off of her but his grip is too strong and then he begins to chop at her right forearm over and over again it would take four hard blows to finally sever her right arm off of her body and so Mary falls to the ground in a heap she's bleeding profusely she's screaming in agonizing pain and all Lawrence can focus on is that one of Mary's amputated hands was clutched on to his left arm when he cut off her all left the hand nerves. It ripped onto his arm and now oh it's stuck to him so very nonchalantly he began trying to flick this hand off of his arm and then finally when it did come off he turned and looked at Mary and realized she had gone silent and she was limp and she was laying in a huge pool of blood and so Lawrence put the bloody hatchet back inside of his van and then he just walked over to Mary and grabbed her and began dragging her about a hundred feet down the road from the van was a culvert a culvert is a big tunnel that oh goes that's what they call the culverts it allows water and runoff to pass by the road without damaging it the story is so awful. this particular culvert underneath this access road was built about 30 feet below the surface of the road and so if you were standing on the road over the area where this culvert was if you walked to the edge of the road on either side there would be a 30 foot drop off down to the opening of this culvert on either side and so Lawrence dragged Mary all the way over to this section of the road over the culvert and then chucked her lifeless body off the side smashing it down onto the rocks below and okay based on the fact that how much information he was giving us i was kind of hoping that you know he would beat her and then she would kick him in the balls run inside the forest run away tell the police a happy ending this ain't a happy fucking ending there's, there's nothing happy about this shit so far Oh then Lawrence walked around very carefully all the way down to her body and stuffed her inside of the actual culvert. And then as he was walking away, he said to her, now you're free. After Lawrence left, Mary should have been dead. Really, she should have died at several she's points still, along this attack. But miraculously, she's Mary did not up. die. And in fact, she would later say she vividly remembered the entire attack. She was fully lucid, fully conscious, fully aware for the entire thing, save for the moment when she was knocked unconscious by the hammer. And so she vividly remembered having her arms amputated, and she specifically remembered one particular point in the beginning before oh, her wanna... left arm, the first arm, had. I don't want to hear this. Oh, this is gonna be. This is a. It's just a. Happy ending, I guess. Kind of. I guess. Amputated. 
He grabs she her left a, wrist, and uh, she listen, in turn... Is only happy thing is she can make a dope-ass pirate cosplay now. ...grabbed with her left hand oh, that's onto because his he left arm. So she's clutching onto him, and so when he came down and cut her arm off, she began falling backwards, but she remembered thinking to herself, why am I falling backwards? I just grabbed onto his arm. I had a firm grip. And then as she's falling, it's like oh, time is standing pain. still. She literally saw her hand still clutching his arm and saw it had been cut off of her body. And then when Lawrence cut off her right arm, despite being in agonizing pain, it's like she instinctively understood that she has to pretend to be dead. Otherwise, she will die. And so she went totally limp, her eyes were half open, and she watched as Lawrence is flicking her left hand, the one that she thought she had gripped onto when she was falling back. She watched as he shook that hand off of his arm. And then she was limp as he grabbed her and dragged her the 100 feet to the culvert. And she was limp and still- Bro, how the hell do people like this exist? What the fuck is wrong with y'all? What the fuck? ...and didn't make a sound when he threw her 30 feet down onto jagged rocks and she broke four of her ribs. She was in excruciating pain, but her will to survive was telling her, make no sound, take this punishment, and you will survive. And then yeah. after he left... Yeah, I would have been dead. Listen, I... I, I, I stopped my toe, I scream. Uh, she broke three ribs, uh, lost two hands, and she was like, oh, nope, I'm there. To pretend to survive. Nope, my ass would be like, ah! That's... She remembers thinking, you know, I don't know where he is. He could be waiting up on the road for me. I can't just crawl out and try to save myself because then he might actually finish me off. Jesus Christ. And so she laid in this culvert in this horrible position, totally contorted, with her arms gone and broken ribs. And then finally, after a while, she started to feel exceptionally tired. And that was from blood loss. And she said there was a voice in her head telling her, you can't go to sleep. If you go to sleep, you're going to die. And if you die, we can't catch this monster and he's going to do this to someone else. And so she had the surge of adrenaline well, where she decided, she did this. I'm going to live. I'm going to get out of here. I don't know if he's still up there, but I have to get out and I have to try to save myself. And so somehow she got out of the culvert. And then once she was on the ground, she dug the nubs of her arms into the dirt and attempted to pack the wound with dirt and mud. And then afterwards, she raised her arms up over her Ugh. head because she didn't want the blood and muscles to fall out. And so with her mutilated arms up over her head, she managed to crawl oh, up this Lord. embankment up onto the road. Oh, she's got no clothes on. She's covered head to toe in blood. She's Wait, she was shock, naked. And she starts running down the highway. And a car would actually come by fairly quickly. But they were so startled at what they were seeing, they didn't stop. And they drove on. And so Mary was... What the fuck? A 15-year-old girl with no hands on the side, a bloody on the side. Or you don't... What? The fuck? Fuck is wrong with you? She ain't got no hands, she ain't gonna stab you with nothing. Help the woman out. Would ultimately run three miles on this highway before finally flagging down a passing motorist. It happened to be a young couple. And after they got over the initial shock of what Mary actually looked like, they put her inside of their car and they sped to the hospital. Mary would stay in the hospital for a month. And during that time, she would give police all this information about her. Who's the gangster on the side of her? Her attacker about Lawrence Singleton and using her Please very detailed got him. description Please. of him, the police were able to come up with a very good composite sketch. They got him? And Lawrence Singleton's neighbor happened to see that sketch and they turned him in. Lawrence was ultimately sentenced to 14 years in prison for what he did to Mary. It was the maximum sentence that the judge could give the judge wanted to do more but legally they couldn't and so mary she testified at court and so excuse me what the fuck is wrong with people 14 years she's 15 14 years nah brother nah that shit ain't right that shit ain't After right at all. ended and he was sentenced, Mary what? was leaving the courthouse. And as she passed by Lawrence, it was the one time she had to be physically close to him, he turned and kind of leaned into her and said, I will finish the job if it takes me the rest of my life. Eight years later... Hey, please tell me somebody, uh, you know... Uh, prison break broke his head in some Lawrence shit. was paroled for good behavior and so of course this terrified Mary who by now had become a wife and she had two sons and so she's worried that now that this guy is free he's 
America, what the fuck? I mean, I can't really speak because Bulgaria's laws are even worse, but... It could be he... What the fuck? Yeah. He's gonna come and finish the job. But Lawrence would not go after Mary. Instead, 10 years after he got out on parole, he would attack he for another woman. Years. A 31 year old. Wow. <laughs> Surprise. Oh my God. Who could have seen that coming? Old mother of three named Roxanne Hayes. And unfortunately, he would kill her. At Roxanne's murder trial, Mary would actually testify against Lawrence. And her testimony is what they used to secure a death sentence for Lawrence. Oh, but a little too late. He could be executed. Lawrence died. A little too fucking late. Cancer. Bro, I'm pissed. Hey, fuck his when ass. Mary heard that Lawrence had died. Couldn't he have cancer a little quicker? God damn it. She Hope it was painful. She did. However, her sons were very relieved to find out oh, that her attack had this. died. Pissed so fuck she took it some solace in that. Oh, Outrage fuck that. over Lawrence's early release, considering yeah. what he did to Mary, yes. and the fact that that early release led to another person yes. being killed, led to the creation of the Lawrence Singleton Bill, which gives Thank judges you. the ability to give 25 year to life sentences in cases that involve torture. Meaning, under this bill, Lawrence would never. Yeah, eight years. Good fuck you. Look at this fucking piece of shit's face. Eight years. Good be Fuck that shit. Nah, Never brother. gotten out of prison after what he did to Mary. So that's going to do it, guys. If you got something out of today's episode and yes. you have not done this already, Anger. please sneak into the like fun house not Mr. in the middle Bones of the fault. night and unplug their iPhone while it's going through a software update. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our... Hey, I'm already there, brother. What the fuck? <laughs> Okay, this pissed me off. Jesus Christ. Eight years. Eight years. Eight years. <sighs> okay, that, that was a good video. Don't go inside of people's cars, okay? Unless you absolutely need to. And look them up and down first, okay? If you're gonna do that, carry a knife or a gun or something. Just in case. Don't fall asleep inside the cars. That's... Uh, no, don't do that. Uh, oh my god. Okay, I hope y'all enjoyed this. If you want to see more Mr. Bonner reactions, I have a playlist right here. I uh, hope you guys have a nice day. So, so, a quick thank you to YouTubers and Patreons. Thank you all for the support. Bye-bye.